know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him. Our next song will be Marching to Zion, uh, which is number 422, Marching to Zion.
for our last song this morning. Uh, we will be singing When the Roll is Called Up Yonder, page 216. morning we have come together as your people in which you have invited to come together to worship you to bow down before you father to give you praise and honor now father we ask that you'll be with us as we open this morning to study your word and to hear what you have for us lord you're so good to us you provided everything for us forever oh lord your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generation. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances for all are your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. So, Father, we come because you deserve our praise and worship. Amen. We ask your Holy Spirit in our midst, and bless us for the blessing that you have prepared for each one of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
We want to welcome each one of you this morning. Thank you so much for visiting, both visitors and members alike. God is so good, isn't He? Yes. All the time. And many times in our, our trials, in our temptations that we face every day, we tend to forget God. But know that God is near. Know that God is near. He is good. He is good. And He always fulfills His promises. So we want to welcome each one of you. I pray that the Lord will give you the blessing that He has prepared for each one of us and for you, especially this morning. We have some announcements to be made. And first, I think I want to call on Earl this morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good to see you guys this morning. Do you all love Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Uh, so, in your bulletins, there's a white flyer. And it says, Eight Secrets of Longevity. How many of you guys know what New Start means? Okay, some of you guys. So, if you haven't heard of New Start, we invite you to come out. It starts two weeks from now, or a week from now. So, if you guys can make it out, not tomorrow, but next week Sunday, if you can make it out, please, you, you don't want to miss this. Um, and invite someone. Invite someone in your family, a friend, co-worker, classmate, em- enemy, um, anyone. Uh, Pen of Inspiration says that the health message is the opening wedge for the, the gospel to enter into the heart. And so invite somebody to learn about health. Tell them we have this health seminar going on at our church. It teaches you how to uh, prevent, stop, and reverse lifestyle diseases. You don't want to miss it. Tell them it's the eight secrets of longevity. And so invite them, share with them that, you know, this this is some good stuff. Um, But yeah, hope to see you there. It's going to be at 5 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Thank you. Thank you, Errol. You know, sometimes for us Adventists, we think it for granted that we have this message. But, you know, are we filling our lives with this message? You look around the world around you. Who's grabbing this message? Is the world out there? And our people is dying of the lack of knowledge. So take advantage of these seminars. You know, as leaders... We prepared everything. We tried to see how we can help our congregation. So make sure, come. Come and listen to this presentation. It's worth your time. And most of all, it will help your health. The second announcement we have this morning is that uh, um, there's an ongoing uh, studies or seminars in El Cajon. So for those of you that living in East County uh, or have some friends in East County, call them to attend the meetings of Pastor Fax. And the rest of the uh, 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 announcement is on the bulletin. Make sure you read the bulletins. And I had like to have Mark to come up here. Watch out. Well, I have a request of the, of the church. Many of you know uh, Jack Lee, and I'm very concerned about Jack. I have not seen him in over two months. I don't know where he is, and uh, I'm trying to help him. So if anybody happens to see him out there on the street somewhere, would you please contact either myself or my wife, Rosa? I would really appreciate that. I I think it might be good if we make clear that uh, Mark has um, basically taken stewardship for for Jack Lee's affairs. And again, I'm sure there's a lot of people here who don't know Jack, but those of us who do, um, he's um, quite elderly and uh, we're really worried about him. So if you see him or hear of him, please let the church office know Let Mark Allen know, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, You know, many years ago, many years ago, as I was beginning to come to this church, uh, 
in the Adventist church, that is. I was, I was told that, uh, you know, Seventh-day Adventists are, you know, just sad-looking people. <laughs> and, you know, after coming to the church, I see that, hey, these people are not odd at all. You know, they have a lot of fun. Good kind. Good kind of fun. You know, fun that does not harm you. So, our social committee is very active on this aspect. And Luela, could you come up, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many of you have lived in San Diego the majority of your life? Really, not that many. Less than half, probably. Well, for those of you who are new, like me, I'm only here just barely five years, some of us don't know where the bell is. And in two weeks, we're going to have our church potluck at the bell. And from what I understand, it's Shelter Island, right? Shelter Island. Now, I know that Uncle Efren and Andy Cindy have been spearing this up for at least 25 years. This is a tradition for this church. So look in your bulletin. We'll have directions next week and then also on the 9th. You won't want to miss this. You want to bring your favorite potluck picnic um, dish, whether it's sandwiches or, you know, um, lots of fruit because it'll be hot out there. Um, If you've got extra tables and chairs, bring something to sit on, bring a blanket, But this will be time to share outside. This is a really, really pretty neighborhood. And there will be more information on the 9th. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You know, as part of your outreach uh, uh, group here, how many of you would like to go visit someone? I I want to see hands. Visit someone. I want to see your faces because when I come to you, I'm going to hold you to your commitment. Because what you read, when you raise your hands, that's a commitment I'm looking for, okay? Okay. So if I forget, make sure you come to me, okay? Because I'm getting up there. All right? Thank you so much. Okay. Now, the final things that we have to do here in the front. Last week, we have read... Uh, you know, this is a mandate from the conference that we have to do this every year. So, beginning around this time, we nominate new officers for the following year. So, last week, we have announced uh, the names of those that were submitted. And so, now, this is our second week of announcement. This is the time that we vote these names. So, you had one week to think of these people should be in this uh, group, right? So... There's no, say, there's no saying no anymore because you have that week already. Now it's time to vote. So who would like to, uh, to move to have these uh, names be uh, uh, in our nominating committee to, to select the new officers? Second? Second. All in favor, please rise, raise your uh, uh, right hand. Okay. Those opposed? Carry. Okay. The last thing is that for those of you that are in this group, I go ahead and I'll go ahead and read this, people, just in case uh, you're here but you're not listening. I hope you can hear me. Nathaniel Montalban, Rita, and Alex Stevens. Rita Villegas, Albert Francis, Dan Them, Jim Sevick, Mark Allen, and Irene Stirner. Sterner. Sterner. Okay. This group, right after the service, would like to meet in the alcove or pastor's office? Uh, associate pastor's office. Associate pastor's office. Just for five minutes. Just so you can clear out what, what needs to be done. Okay? And maybe uh, put some, uh, some dates of, of when do you want to meet. Thank you so much, and our program will proceed as listed. All right. Our scripture reading this morning is found in John 14, 
One and three. And this is, most of us memorize these passages. John 14, one, two, three. Okay, everybody's there? All right. This is a promise for each one of us. Let's read it together. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. May the Lord have his blessing. Okay. Let's turn our hymnal to uh, 229.
We just want to thank you so much for the Sabbath. Thank you for the, everybody who is here today, for the family and friends. Thank you for all your blessings, your love and your kindness, Lord. I just want to ask you, please send your Holy Spirit here and now. Bless this service. Bless this worship, Lord, as we worship you all together. And I just want to pray for us. Uh, specific specific people right now, Lord. I want to pray for David's neighbor, uh, neighbor's brother who has been stabbed. Lord, I just want to ask you, please, uh, we are asking for healing, Lord. Uh, also, I want to pray for Judy, Pedro, and Maryland, Lord, as you can be with them and guide them, Lord, and you have a plan for them. We just ask you, send your angels that way and just be with them, Father. Also, I just want to thank you for everybody who is here today, for the members, for the guests. Uh, thank you for that you care for every single one of us, Lord. Bless them. Guide them throughout today and tomorrow and this week, next year, and forever. Be with them, Father, and bless them. I want to pray for our youth, uh, for the ministry they do. Thank you for the youth rush or the ministry they do here this summer, Lord. It's absolutely amazing. They're definitely doing your work. Also, I want to ask you, please be with the pastor as he is bringing the message to us today. Bless him and speak before him, Lord. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids can see. We want to make sure that we don't miss anybody. Okay, there's one more over there. One more. Two more over there. Over there, Nicole. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. All right, there's one more up there. 
Uncle Tommy is over there his, his hands up. Did you go over there? See? Okay. All right. There's one more over there. One more. There's a hand up there. All right. Uh, now, children, I want you to sit in the front. We'd like to have a deacon to come down to pick up the children's offering, please. Okay. Hang on, hang, hang on, Rob. There's one more. Mercedes. Mercedes. Thank you so much. Now you can sit down in the front. Uh, brother in, and, and Pastor Burton will have a story this morning. Good morning. I'm glad to be able to be with you here this morning. Uh, I want to ask you a couple of questions, and then I'm going to share with you some things. Uh, first of all, how old are you? What's how we, Anybody here seven or eight or nine? None? Okay. You're below that age, huh? All right. Good enough. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Burton Maxwell, and I'm retired now, a retired minister. But I grew up in the San Joaquin Valley, and we, we grew up during the Depression time. I don't know, you don't know what that is, but we didn't have any money. In fact, my mother one time got a great big sack of lima beans, great big sack of lima beans, and we ate lima beans for breakfast and for noon and for supper. And we ate, that, we ate lima beans until we ate everybody, every bean that was in that sack. So I tell you, I still love lima beans. But you know, I've learned something, is that you can take something like that and you can, you can make some really good food out of it. My mother used to make a, a spread for my t- sandwiches when I went to school, lima bean sandwich spread. And uh, she took those and it really was good. The reason I'm telling you this is because I grew up in a very, very, very poor home. And uh, just like most kids, I like to do things and I like to play with things, but we didn't have any money. Didn't have a single, we just didn't have any money. So I got very interested in in small cars and so forth. And so uh, my mother used to go to town and she'd go to town and she would uh, say, I'd say, Mom, can you go and please get me a little car? And so she went and got me. She got me a whole bunch of these cars. And this is a rubber car. It costs 25 cents. It cresses. But, uh, you know, I just love to play with little cars. Well, I just didn't have any money to buy real good stuff. So I thought to myself, well, I don't know, what am I going to do? And I decided that maybe what I ought to do is start making stuff. And so as I grew up, one day I went to school, and, and the, I was in the first grade or fourth grade, and uh, I was bored with school. And the teacher one day said to me, uh, well, you know, I'm going to give you some time to get better acquainted, and get, you can visit with some of the kids. And this boy came up to me, and he says, I have an American Flyer catalog I think you'd like to see, which has got trains in it. I took one look at that catalog, and I fell in love with trains. And I thought to myself, oh, man, I love this. And, but, you know, I didn't have any money to buy anything. So I thought, what am I going to do? Well, I decided the best thing I could do was to make things. And so I took and started making some things. And I want to share with, share with you some of the things that I've made. And the reason I wanted to share these with you is because, you know, God has given you special gifts. And um, what he wants to do is to, for you to develop your talents and grow. Okay, hold on just a minute. I'll let you look at it. You want to see it? This is the very first thing that I made. I carved that out of wood. She, you want to show that around? 
Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, after after a, a while, I started making the little things better, better, and that car, by the way, was the first card that we had. I remember, when we, I carved that out of our own. You know, I had the yeah, it was an old Chevrolet, and so I took and carved that. Then they bought my folks bought a new car, and I thought I'm going to carve that one too. So that's carved out of wood. Well, I kept carving. Then I got better at it. So I started making trucks. Little trucks like this. And then I made a I made a pickup. Carved that out of wood. So all of these are carved out of wood. And then after a while I got pretty good at it and I thought, you know, I'm gonna make some really good stuff. And so I made a a truck. It's a hay truck. So I have a trailer with it here. Here, you can just put it right in here. I have a trailer here, so you can, and if you want to look at this, I'll let you, I'll hold this thing. Don't break it, because it's pressure. Just show, don't, just take it and show it around everybody, okay? Be very careful with it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it, it runs. All right, show everybody. Show them the, go down here, show everybody. Let them just look it over. Anyhow, I started making all kinds of stuff. And do you want to show that to them too? Okay, just be very careful with it here. Thank you. Well, you know, I thought one day I need to have some hay bales for this truck because I was, uh, uh, you know, I was raised where they raised a lot of hay. So I decided I'd make my hay bales. And so these fit on this truck. Here, you want to... That's good. Okay. All right. I thought, how can I make hay bales? So I made them on a sponge. And um, then I, I made the little hay bales, and so they fit on the trailers like this, see? And uh, I have it on my model railroad. Well, I have a model railroad now, and I, I remember when I was uh, in the fourth grade, nine years old, when I fell in love with trains. But I never was able to really build anything until I retired. So when we, uh, they asked us to come here, and we found this house, I wanted to buy it for only one reason, because it had this big room in it that I could build a, my train. And so we bought the house, and then after I retired, we started building this train. And I want to invite you to come and visit with us sometimes. And, uh, and so I just wanted to, but what I wanted, I wanted to really illustrate was this one thing. You can be anything or do anything you want to do. It's just a matter of setting your mind to it. And one of the biggest problems we have today with young people is that we are, are reading stuff that we shouldn't be reading, and we're doing things we shouldn't be doing, and uh, what we should be doing is some creative things. So if you like to read, read good stuff. If you like to make things, make good things. And I'll be more than glad to help you to decide how you'd like to make something. But just decide you want to do what is right and you want to develop your mind so that you can become the best you are. So when you get to be my age, you can have a lot of fun still. <laughs> let's just bow our heads and let's have a word of prayer. Father, we humbly and we gratefully come to you. And I want to thank you for being able to visit with these young people. I pray that you bless each one of them. Help them that they just might totally give their lives to you and follow you no matter what. And Father, as they grow up, I know you have a plan for them. I just pray that you have your plan carried out in their lives, and may they have the happiness that you want them to have. Lord, we are yours. We thank you for what you've done, for what you're going to do. These things we ask and thank you for in Jesus' name. Amen.
awesome to see you. But today's offering is going to Conference Church and School Building Foundation. So if Deacons would come forward. Awesome. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you for everything you provided for us, that you give for us, Lord. And as we give back, Lord, please bless these offerings and uh, whatever is going to be used for. Thank you for all your blessings. And as we continue on, be with us and guide us. We all pray in Jesus' name. Amen. To come forward for a uh, child dedication, baby dedication. And as they're coming, I want to remind you of uh, how that, uh, though you've read this many times, how that Jesus and his disciples were out there. And it says in Matthew 19, verse 13, then the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. That's all the folks wanted. Just, Jesus, come, lay your hands on them, and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them, and Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. Why don't you, yeah, why don't you come up here? And this mic is now on, guys in the back. You see, um, the people were bringing those children to Jesus. The disciples said, well, he's too busy, you know. This isn't as important as the things that Jesus, other things Jesus has to do. Why, this morning we have special music, and we've got a sermon to preach, and we've got all kinds of other things that are going on. And the, and the disciples said, well, you know, there's really not time for this. There's always time for the children. Amen. Amen? There's always time. Jesus always wants us to bring our children to him. Parents, hold your children a little closer to you just now. Would you, come on, put your arms around little Stephen back there and, and hold them close because Jesus wants your touch to be his touch this morning. As he... As we pray this morning for Madeline, let's remember that Jesus wants to bless our children. He wants us to dedicate them to him. He wants to set them aside as special unto him. Amen? Amen. And so this morning as I lay my hand on this sweet little sleeping baby girl, 
very gently so I don't wake her up. Let's bow our heads and pray. This wee little child, Madeline Alexander, we dedicate to thee, O God of grace and purity. Shield her from sin and threatening wrong. Leave her not to temptation, but deliver her from evil. Let thy love her life prolong. Bless this mother Shannon and Father Dave and child with an abundance of your Holy Spirit and bless every effort to bring them to yourself their whole lives long. And Father, because we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus, because we pray it for his sake, we believe that Shannon and Dave and little Madeline are set aside specially for you. We believe, Father, that you're going to answer this prayer and that you are going to protect and bless Madeline, that she is going to grow up to know you and love you and live for you and work for you throughout all of eternity in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Are you crying? <laughs> Tears of joy. We get to give her her first Bible here. It's a little testament. God bless you. you. We certainly love you and your family. These folks are fairly new to our church. They, uh, I like to tell this story. They actually got in contact with us. At least part of the story is they got in contact uh, with us through watching us on the Internet. So uh, praise the Lord and welcome. We love you guys. At this time, we have our special music. And uh, by the way, come on up, kids. Don't, don't let, don't, uh, yeah, come on up. This is our Youth Rush team, and I was uh, privileged to do a worship talk for them a few times. And um, one of those times, they sang a, a song that I just really liked. It just sounded so good. Yes, this is our Youth Rush team. You notice how many of them are out there? They're out there every day making contact with people, uh, presenting, uh, putting literature in their homes, great controversies and many other good books, health books and so forth, children's books. And God is blessing you, right? Amen. Is, he, is he blessing you? Girls, is he blessing you? Yeah. I heard the guys, I didn't hear the girls. Anyway, thank you for singing for us. Aureli, would you raise your hand? Aureli is their, their team leader. She's the boss. Thank you for arranging this. They're going to sing two numbers for us. Happy Sabbath, church. Today our group will be singing two songs. Uh, the first song is Here I Am, which is a calling from God asking, Who shall I send? In which our group will be singing, Here I Am, Lord. Our second song is actually our, our group favorite. It's called By Our Love. A song which um, the people will be, be only be able to see Jesus through the which, um, where we'll be able to see, just reflect his character. So those, these are the two songs that we'll be singing today. Yeah. 
would she greet the people as they leave? So,
hear them during the week as they sit here and they have worship. The sanctuary every day is filled with their voices singing the praises of the Lord, just like you heard them do. And uh, I think it is even more enthusiastic during the middle of the week. So thank you, young people, for being here and doing that for us, singing and praising the Lord this morning. Would you bow your heads with me, please, as we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for thy word. We pray that as we open its pages and consider it what it has to say, Lord, may we hear your voice speaking each one of us according to our need in the name of Jesus. Amen. The first uh, century uh, wedding, Jewish wedding service is more than interesting. I am uh, sure that some of us here this morning, maybe many of us are familiar with it, but let's just review it here this morning. Um, first of all, the, it all begins with a, a father who goes out and in search of a bride for her, his son. Or uh, he sends an agent like Abraham sent uh, out for his son Isaac to find a bride for him. Or the young man himself will go. But eventually, the young man does go and meet with the, the bride's family, the bride-to-be's family, the one he's proposing to. And um, he has to show up with three things. The, the first thing is a large sum of money, the bride price. The next thing he must bring with him is a contract, a, a betrothal contract, in which he promises, uh, lays out in uh, black and white what he is promising to do for his new bride. And the third thing is a skin of wine. So, if the father of the bride accepts this proposal, the girl is called in and they, uh, they look over the betrothal contract and they, they actually seal the contractual agreement by sitting together and drinking wine together. So if the father, again, accepts, he accepts the money, the bride price, he agrees to the marital contract, the covenant, and then they sit down and they drink wine together as a sign of the fact that they have all agreed that there is now uh, a marriage contract. Now, at that point, from that point on, the bride and groom are considered to be married. We'll come back to that at the end of today's sermon. Um, and after the agreement is made, the groom leaves, and what he goes to do is he goes back to his father's house to add a room to prepare a place for, his, for this new family that he is going to begin with his bride. And from that time on, since he has paid the price and so forth, she is considered to be his. And when it's all done, when he's got everything ready, he's going to return to take what now belongs to him, his new bride. So the young man goes away, and sometimes, usually, you know, I've read some places where it's at least a year between the betrothal and the actual wedding. But in any case, sometimes it's up to two years later. That's quite a long time to wait, isn't it? In any case. So he goes away, sometimes for two years, and then comes back, and then the wedding. By the way, if anybody asked in the meantime, you know, either of the bride or the groom, well, when's the wedding? You're engaged, people ask. What do they ask? When's the wedding? And the, always the answer has to be, well, it's up to the father. Only the father knows. And by the way, it's the father of the groom who has to show that he approves of the the um, preparations that have been made for his daughter, for his, excuse me, for his new daughter-in-law. So in a sense, does that echo something you remember from Scripture? If not, if you're not remembering it, we will come to that eventually here this morning. So yes, when the father agrees that everything's ready, then comes a wedding. You know, it's it. 
As I think about that, the story of redemption, the story of, of creation and redemption in a certain sense from the beginning to its end, if you look at it biblically, from the beginning to end, it's the story of a father in search of a bride who will love his son wholly, completely, with purity, and uh, will be, keep herself only unto him so long as she lives and he lives. And so, um, in a certain sense, the story of redemption is the story of a wedding. In Genesis 2, there's a wedding. Amen? And then, and then in Revelation, even all the way through Revelation, there's a, a bride and a groom. That theme runs all the way through the story of redemption. Amen? <clears throat> Now Paul picks up this up and he, he uh, shows us the connection. He says that he basically points out that Christ's relationship with the church is a model for Christian marriage. And so he turns it around the other direction there. So let's look at Ephesians 5.24. I have a lot of scriptures this morning. You're going to have to turn fast because our time is running out fast. So now as the church submits to Christ, 5.24, Ephesians 5.24, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for, up for her, cares for her, just as Christ, this is verse 29 to 31, and he cares for her just as Christ does the church. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. One flesh. We'll return to that concept. 2 Corinthians 11.2, Paul writes, For I have betrothed you to one husband. You see how this runs again. This idea of, of marriage runs through the story of redemption. I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You notice that word betrothed, which means pledged, espoused. It really means more in those days than it does now. You know, some of your translations will say promised. We break our promises so easily, but that wasn't true then, and I'll return to that concept too. It not, was not easy to break this promise made to a bride in those days. Um, Believers, according to the Bible, are as a bride that is pledged to be married to Christ someday. And the bride price has been paid, hasn't it? We read in Acts 20, verse 28, Keep watch over yourselves and all, the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. And 2 Corinthians 7:23, For you are bought with a price. And so there is the the bride price. And then what about the betrothal contract? And what about that uh, drinking of the wine? 1 Corinthians eleven twenty five. 25, in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And so Christ right there with his apostles established the betrothal uh, contract with his church through his apostles he promised that he is going to be as a bride to his church, that someday he will come back. But first, he says, in my father's house, our scripture reading for this morning, in my father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare, prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so the bridegroom, in, as Christ, the bridegroom, goes and prepares a new residence for his bride, the church. And when he is done, when he has it finished, when all things are ready, when the Father says all things are ready, he comes back. Matthew 24, 36, 44, But of that day and hour knows no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. And that marriage, in other words, may come at any time. The bride doesn't know, 
Her family doesn't know. Only the father. It's all up to the, to the groom's father as to when he is ready to take his bride and bring her home with himself. Now that reminds me of something. One day I got a call. I was told that somebody would be calling me. His name was Sam. He was going to ask if he could take my daughter out for a sandwich, I think it was. I don't remember exactly what it was. But I said, well, Sam, I don't know you. <laughs> I gave him a hard time. I had been hard on him the whole time. And uh, I love him, but nevertheless, I've been hard on him. I said, uh, you know, in the end, I told them both. I said, um, well, you know what? Look, got two requirements. One, finish college. And Sam, you got to have a job. I want you to be able to take care of my daughter. Now, praise the Lord, you know, in this day and age, a lot of, a lot of young people will say, what do you care what he thinks? <laughs> but you know, Sam, you've, you've been really really uh, impressed me a lot because you've cared. And uh, so, uh, by the way, one of the, um, I think I was one of the first people to know that he got a job. <laughs> He's saying yes. <laughs> okay, I got the job. <laughs> you got the girl. <laughs> That reminds me of something else. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the exact circumstances now, but uh, Becky can tell the story way better, but I'm telling it, so we're going to have to deal with this. So they're um, taking a walk, Sarah and Becky, and I think they were talking about some other girls and what they were doing and their boyfriends or something. And, and I think, Becky, didn't you ask her if, if something was going on with her or whatever? I don't know anyway. No. Uh, Anyway, you'll remember when I say this. And then uh, Sarah said, well, you know, like there's nobody, you know, that I'm interested in now or whatever. And, or, or there's nobody you're interested in now. Well, there is a guy that I have met. And it was about two years. Is it about two years ago that uh, you called me, Sam? And about two years ago when that conversation happened with... So I'm thinking of the preparations now. You know, believe it or not, I'm trying to get back to the sermon here. Uh, it's been about two years, Sam, and uh, all things are ready. All things are ready. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. You can be more enthusiastic. Amen. You like, you like weddings? You like weddings? All right, well, let's have one. Okay, so back to this. Revelation 19, 7 to 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her is granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the linen, fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. The bride awaits the marriage and while she's waiting... I failed to mention this earlier. She is preparing herself to be a wife, to be a mother. She's preparing herself for marriage. That's the way it is for Christians, folks. That's what we do in the meantime before the wedding supper of the Lamb. The great wedding supper of the Lamb is when? When is it? When does it happen, folks? Come on, help me out here. When does it happen? I'm not hearing one answer. Second coming, it comes when Jesus comes again. That's, you might say, the beginning of the wedding. Okay? I'll say, I have more to say about that maybe some other time. But in any case, Christ is coming for a church that is arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, which is a symbol of her consistent habit of righteous life, living a bride that is totally devoted, pure of heart, in love only with him, fully submitted and perfect, therefore, in his sight. And when the day comes, 
It's a day of rejoicing. And when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, you will be called by a new name, Isaiah 6 says, that the mouth of the Lord will bestow, for, excuse me, you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. How do, how, doesn't that sound like a wedding? And for the Lord will take delight in you as a young man marries a maiden, as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Folks, Jesus wants to have the wedding. He wants to be married to you, to his church. He wants to come so bad and get you. What's holding things up? Are we preparing ourselves to be his bride? That's what he wants. Do you want to be his bride? Prepare your hearts. Prepare your souls. Put on Christ and put off the world. It's a great watershed of history that when Jesus comes again, because it says when the king came to see the guests at the wedding, he noticed a man who was not wearing the wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without the wedding clothes? The man was speechless, and the king told the attendants, throw him out into the darkness, for many are invited, but few are chosen. And so when Jesus comes again, there are people to be ready. May we be ready. May every single person sitting here this morning so commit your lives. Let nothing keep you from being ready when he comes. Be ready. Get ready now. You'll, I pray, be ready. But there are others, Jesus says, that won't be ready. In fact, it seems like the majority won't. And then there's still others who think that they are ready, but they're not. They have refused to comply with God's will in their lives. They've resisted. They've held back. It takes total dedication, a total commitment of love to him to be ready. For, do you understand that? Do you understand that? We can't give him part of ourselves. We have to give all of ourselves, just like at a real wedding, folks. That's what your bride, that's what the groom needs from his bride. That's what the, the bride needs from her groom, the total commitment of a life. And so does Jesus. Revelation 21, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. At the conclusion of that ancient wedding uh, service, right? Where did they go? The groom took the bride to his father's house, and they together... I know it's very different now. We don't have the same customs anymore. But if you look at this, this ancient picture, how much it is like the story of redemption. Because we are taken to live with our groom in the Father's house. Can you say amen? And what a place that will be. A perfect, see in the end, it's going to be this perfect home on a perfect earth living happily ever after with Jesus and with the Father. If anything ever was, it will truly be heaven on earth. Now, Jesus prayed. Let, let, me, let me back up a little bit. Do you remember Ephesians chapter 5? It echoes... The, the words of Genesis chapter 2, and it declares that in marriage, the two.
greater oneness between himself and us. Listen to it here in John 17. I in them. That's what he wants. I in them. And thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. He wants a oneness in his church that comes from a oneness with himself. Him actually dwelling in us. And why? Listen. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Christ prayed for this oneness in the church and oneness with himself, I in them, that the world would know. He needs us to show oneness in the church and he needs a, a, a oneness with us individually and personally, I in them, that the world will know that the Father sent him. How do we evangelize the world? Through oneness. Oneness in the church and oneness with Christ. That the world will know that Christ has been sent to the world and that the Father loves them, the world, just as he loves the Son. From the time of, I mentioned this earlier, from the time of the betrothal ceremony, the bride and groom were considered to be married. So much so that the only way that could be broken, it wasn't like our promises that we make today. You know, we make promises. Uh, I have this happen, you have this happen. People make promises to us and they break their promises so easily. But not so with this promise of betrothal. It was so much so that in those days that you actually had to initiate divorce proceedings to get out of this agreement. You had to actually divorce the person. When we're baptized, and every time we take that communion cup, you know what we're doing? Especially thinking of that communion cup now. Think of the cup that the, the, the groom and the father of the bride and the bride all sat down and partook of. That cup is like that agreement. It's like it is... Us saying, yes, I remember that I am betrothed to Christ. I am promised to him. I am promised to love him only, to keep myself only unto him as long as we both shall live. And he lives a long time. And he threw up by, by him, we are going to live a long time. We are going to be betrothed to him forever. Please say Amen. amen. We are considered to consider ourselves right now married to Him. Although we don't follow these customs, every engagement and betrothal and wedding ceremony is a sign and a prophecy of the coming of the Lord in the clouds of heaven to take us home, take us to His Father's house. Marriage was created to be in the image of God from the very beginning and continues to be. And every marriage continues to be under obligation, under God's command, subject to his will, to be what he intended it for it from the beginning. Man and woman showing their children and society a likeness, a picture of the nature and character of God. May it be so in our homes. May it be so in his church. Please meditate upon this. As those who are singing our appeal song, come forward and sing, He's only a prayer away.
is someone who loves every sinner. He's calling, oh, hear him today. Tis Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. He's only a prayer away. He's only a prayer away. He's only a prayer away. You can have Jesus, the Savior of man. He's only a prayer away. Though friends may deride and forsake you, and leave you alone in the way. Remember the promise of Jesus. He's only a prayer away. He's only a prayer away. He's only a prayer away. You can have Jesus the Savior of man. He's only a prayer away. Our Lord suffered death for transgressions, the death that each mortal should pay. Oh, why do you languish in sorrow? He's only a prayer He's only a prayer away. He's only a prayer away. You can have Jesus, the Savior of man. He's only a prayer I just want to remind those who are in a nominating committee to please meet with myself and Ivan. We'll be meeting back in his office with the nominating committee, and uh, Efren will greet you at the door. God bless you. It's been uh, nice to worship with you here this morning. Our Heavenly Father, you are only a prayer away. Thank you for the message. And as we go, bless every single person who is in here today, Lord. Bless our families and friends. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.